everyone. Today I'm going to be talking about different ways that I use my altar and what I personally use it for. I've gotten a lot of questions about altars and what you can use them for and what I use mine for. So I figured I would just make a video about it instead of posting the same comment over and over. Again, I definitely will still keep answering comments, I'm sure, but I figured it was just easier to have a video to give people to kind of go over the different bullet points of what altars are, what they can be used for, and what I use mine for. So I looked it up on Google because I was curious about like what the definition of an altar was. And Google describes it as a table or flat topped block used as the focus for a religious ritual, especially for making sacrifices or offerings to a deity. So before we go any further, I'm going to go into what I use my altar for because I know that I get asked this question a lot and I just want to deal with it right in the beginning of the video. So if you only want to know, then you don't have to watch the rest of the video. But what I use my altar for is I've always wanted a sacred space that I could do, you know, spells in or just have as a sacred spot in my house. And it's not that you can't have multiple sacred places in your house or you can't have a whole room, but at the time when I began making my altars, which was back when I lived in my apartment, it was really hard to have just an area to have as a sacred space. And even though houses, I believe, people's homes are essentially a big sacred space to them, I also like having a place where it's constantly concentrated and I feel like that's what an altar does for me. It gives me a place that's a sacred place where I'm not going to put my keys, I'm not going to put receipts, I'm not going to put my purse, I'm not going to have all of that clutter, if you will, that could clutter up a home as a sacred space, but just have a space where I can really have that sacred area that I can use. And a lot of people who practice as witches and are Wiccan have places where they have that. They have altars that are cabinets or something like that where they can store things. And I really liked that. And I really liked, even though I don't consider myself a witch or a Wiccan, I do like having that altar space and I also use it to help myself set energy intentions for a month. So because I redo it every month, it helps me to realize what energy I want to focus on that month, whether it be working on my spiritual abilities, working on loving myself more, working on um, releasing things, anything, and I can focus those energies and set that intention for a whole month in one place and be constantly reminded of it by looking at that altar. So that's what I use mine for. I know that everybody uses them different ways, but that has just been the way that I use mine and um, it's the way that I use mine currently. I don't know if I'm going to continue forever using it that way, but that's what I use it for right now. Another misconception is that altars can be an evil thing or a malevolent thing. A lot of times people can associate them so closely with witches and witchcraft and you know, satanic rituals and things like that, that people forget that it can be used for such good purposes. Not that witch work is bad, just that a lot of people associate witch work with negative things. I feel like any belief system, any spirituality can use an altar in a way that works for them. And I'm going to list off a couple things that I thought of that you could use it for different kind of religious things. So you could use an altar to celebrate a loved one or someone who's passed on. I've seen a lot of people use them this way and I think it's a great way of giving a sacred space to family members or pets that you want to honor their life in a small way in your house and have a space for them. And I feel like that's a really great way to do that. I've seen people do it to where they just have a little shelf for the person who's passed away or pet. I've seen people use their whole altar and just set up their altar for the month that the person has passed away. And I feel like that's a really great way to celebrate that person's life and really honor them. Another way to use an altar is to invoke energies and help aid in spell work. And a lot of people who are Wiccan or practice witchcraft use it this way. And I can't really talk a whole lot about that because I, I do rituals and I do spells but I would not say I'm an expert and I feel like I'm not quite at the point where I can really recommend ways you could use it that way but 
you can always Google it. I'm sure there's a lot of sites that can help you figure out how to use your altar for that purpose. Another way which you can use an altar, which Google has mentioned, is to honor a god or goddess or deity. And a lot of people use it in, um, I think they use it in Buddhism or Hinduism, where they have the Buddha statue and they put offerings in front of it. But it's a place for you to honor a god or a goddess or a deity and give them offerings or just celebrate them for what they are and what they can do. In other spiritual practices, such as Christianity, or Catholicism, you can use an altar for a home base for your books. So if you're a Wiccan, maybe you'll use it as your home base for your Book of Shadows or your grimoire. Or as a Christian, you could use it for a home as for your Bible. As a Catholic, you can use it for a place for your statues of Mother Mary or Jesus. Or you could use it for a place for your Bible as well or other spiritual books and I feel like that's a great way to use it if you're not really sure how to use it yet too and if you're just starting off as a Wiccan or a witch you can always use it to keep your book of shadows until you really feel the need to do something different with it and that's the thing a lot of people feel like they have to know exactly what to do with an altar to, f to set one up but I feel like that's not exactly the case you can set it up and just let it lead you let it tell you what you should do with it and what I mean by that is it's not going to talk to you it's not going to physically be like hey put rocks on me but for me, every month I feel the need to change it. I feel the need to renew the energy. And I feel like it just gets stagnant by the end of the month and that's why I change it so much. But I'm also a Pisces, so I find myself changing up the waters a lot. And I feel like that's a really great way to use an altar too. And it will tell you what you're supposed to do with it. And I think just following your intuition and just following your gut, if that makes more sense to you, but just trusting that you're going to know what to do with it, even if it's just holding your book of shadows in the beginning. So one thing that I want to mention is that everybody is different and everybody has different paths and just because I use my altar for the reasons that I do doesn't mean that it's going to work for you and that's okay. And if it doesn't, just do what feels right to you. If you feel that you want to have it as a home base for a spiritual book or you want to have it as a place to memorialize a loved one who has passed on or a loved pet that has passed on or if you want to use it as a place to store your crystals. I feel like just with all spiritual things there's never really a right way or a wrong way to do things because you're really doing it by your intuition and what you feel is right and what you feel like is going to help you in your path. So if you feel like having an altar in your house is something that you want to do, do it. If it's not, then don't. But I also feel like, you know, I can't tell you how to set up your altar because it's really up to you and it's really up to what you want to use it for and what you want to specify it to help you with. And just like I said before, it will tell you how to use it and how it can help you. And just like people are intuitively drawn to different crystals that help with different things to help them with certain things in their life. I think an altar will do the same thing because I've found that with mine. When I need help with something, I will feel intuitively drawn to put something on my altar that's going to help me with that. And it really, it talks to you in a way like that, which is a great way for people who are just getting started with their intuition to use that as kind of a training ground for your intuition. Use it to help guide you to setting it up the way that it should be. And just like you've certainly seen in some of my altar redecorating videos, sometimes I'll put something down and I'll be like, wow, that doesn't feel good. I'm going to move it. And there's nothing wrong with that. And you don't have to have one way of setting it up. It doesn't always have to be the same. And it doesn't have to always be the same thing. And if you want to change it up, it's totally fine too. And it, there's no set rules for an altar, I believe. And I think that there are certain elements in certain religions that require it, but in my spiritual path, 
I don't have any rules for my altar and I don't have any specific use for it because it tells me what to use it for every month. So I really believe that if you just follow your intuition, you will find out what you need to use it for. Another question that I get asked sometimes is what can I use as an altar? Which is a great question because a lot of people assume that it always has to be a little cabinet or it always has to be a little block of wood or it always has to be a table or something like that. And that's not true. I use a small two shelf bookshelf and that works perfectly for me right now because it's a really tiny space so it's not overwhelming for a beginner and it's a place for me to keep my sacred books or even my special books and my crystals and my card decks and for someone in my path and on my journey that works perfectly for me but it might be too small for someone who's a little bit more advanced so again let your intuition guide you if you're walking through Target and you see a little cabinet that just seems a little bit too small but it just feels like an altar, you have to take that into consideration because it might be the altar for you. It really depends on the person and I think it just depends on how big you need it. It may be that you start off with something small and then move on to something larger later on. Another question I've gotten asked is how can I keep my pets or children out of my altar and how can I keep things in it safe from that happening? Cats are really a fan of like throwing things on the ground. I grew up right on cats, I know. But if you do have pets or children who do seem to get into your altar and move things around or get into places that they shouldn't, I highly, highly recommend either getting a altar with cabinets on it or if you can't afford something like that put your altar on a shelf that's high enough away from children's grasping hands or you know animals and stuff that it's not going to get disturbed and if you have cats I would recommend using just a little bit of poster putty on the bottom of what you put on your altar. So if you're using a bunch of crystals, you can just put a little bit of poster putty, a little ball of it on the bottom of each crystal and that will keep it stationary. So it's going to prevent it from just getting knocked over if the cat jumps up there or something like that. You do have to be careful because some poster putty can leave behind stains, so I would highly recommend spot testing in a place that's not super noticeable to see if it stains. If you can afford something with cabinets, I highly recommend that because that's going to prevent children and pets from getting it to it and your supplies. And especially if you work with essential oils or any kind of herbs that could be dangerous to pets or children or really anything like lighters. Some people have, have athames that they have in their altars and sometimes that can be really dangerous to have accessible to children. So if you do have that kind of thing, get a um, cabinet lock or some side of internal cabinet mechanism that makes it harder for the children or pets to get into and I, I feel like that is the safest way because we don't want anything going bad and you know messing up your altar and hurting the children or the pets. I hope the video wasn't too long. I'm sorry if it was. I tried to go as fast as I could and cover all the things that I wanted to cover, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos from me. If you have any questions for me regarding altars or anything like that, you can leave them in the comments down below and I'll do my best to answer them. And I hope you guys are all having a great day and I will talk to you later. Bye. Okay, I'm leaving now. Oh no. Sorry.